And just to show you why it's important, if you uh, there is there is this instability. I, I want you to uh, to, uh, to convey you that it is uh, important and, and very frequent. And the consequence is that probably it will end inflation much early. And I will uh, I just want to explain why it's important. Here you have let's say, a typical potential inflation. It's Tarobinsky, but it is not important. And usually we say, okay, inflation will end where well, the potential becomes too steep to support inflation. That's when the slow roll parameter epsilon becomes the order one. Okay. And uh, as we said in the previous talk, we look at the scale, I mean, the, the scale of the curves over the CMB, are the ones which cross uh, the hurdle radius 60, let's say, for the forget inflation. So from there, you can look at the, the slope and the curvature of the potential here. You compute an S, R, and you have a potential. And what I'm telling you is that uh, with the same say uh, potential, uh, it will be that the inflation ends at a critical value of epsilon much more than one, like 10 to the minus 2 or 10 to the minus 4, which can be hundreds of epochs before the standard end of inflation. And in that case, of course, the new 50 or 60 folds before the end of inflation is on a completely different part of the potential in which NS and R may have nothing, in general, have nothing to do. So this has lots of uh, consequences for observers. In particular, uh, of course, this depends on models, but if you if you um, consider models which look like that, which are preferred by the data, uh, which are plateau models of Starobinsky type, uh, the generic trend is as follows: if you if you go backwards in time with inflation, uh, the potential is flatter and flatter. So in that case, the generic prediction will be um, that NS closer to one. That, that spectral index. Uh, that, 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 Promoted fluctuations closer to scaling variance, and that's why generate a smaller amplitude of potential waves because basically inflation arises at a value of epsilon smaller than what. So, so just a few slides to give you the main message and, and, and explain why it's important for observation. So, in more details, uh, how it works. Um, so, inflation in high energy physics, the simplest hope that we can have is, is this one. This is a typical framework of people doing inflation high energy physics. Uh, let's hope or let's make uh, that one of the field in high energy physics is light and drives inflation. That's already very hard, that's the eta problem, that's difficult, but let's suppose it works. And there are a bunch of other scanners, and the simple idea is let's stabilize it by giving them a large mass. Large is a mass greater than the relevant scale to inflation, which is H. And so the idea that all these scalar fields, here I just put one extra, this is the um, well, they would be massive, they would decouple from the low energy fixity. The low energy fixity is here, inflation, that's it. And indeed, if you have such a massive field, if it is displaced from its minimum, it should rapidly roll back to the stabilized value, so chi equals zero here. And effectively, although you start using the complicated model with two or 100 scalar fields, it's effectively a single field. That's so that's a standard, simple sort of paradigm of inflation in high energy physics. We don't really think that single fields through inflation exist in nature. It's just a way of parameterizing and explaining the data simply. And the simplest hope is basically that. A valet with steep walk. And what we say is, well, it's quite generic that at some point there will be an instability, which we make this a uh, weird picture that the field will start up climbing its potential. And although this may be this may seem weird, I will explain that it is rooted in quite well standard and uh, well understood physics. And that probably this instability terminates inflation. Uh, I say uh, probably because right now, as I'm showing you, this has lots of lots of things with hybrid uh, inflation that we heard about. And hybrid inflation is a complicated process, so there are lots of theoretical uncertainties. Right. So the whole thing is uh, this curve fixed space. Uh, this curve space that I've told you about. So the generic Lagrangian that I'm talking about is GR plus a bunch of scalar fields, so phi i are any number of scalar fields, or i goes from 1 to n, the potential, and the crucial thing is this gij here. You see that if gij, which is a function of the fields, is just delta ij, it's a uh, collection of, uh, yeah. you just add the kinetic term of the scalar fields, but in general, this thing is non trivial. And that's, I want to explain, because that's crucial, that it's not something that I'm putting by hand to have this phenology. If you're playing with supergravity, for example, well, first, it already explains the presence of scale, several scalar fields, right? Because in supergravity, the, the, the scalar fields are complex. So in terms of real scalar fields, there are at least two, usually much more. 
And in this case, there is no choice. Um, given the, the, the carrier potential of theory, um, you can derive what is the metric, and, and, and simply it's a data from a theory. It's not, it's not trivial. That's, let's say, a top-down approach where you are not given the Lagrangian, but uh, from a more effective and serial point of view, uh, they also, I mean, you can, uh, you can expect higher order operators of, of that type. And I will just show you two examples. Uh, since this is the plum data, there have been lots of, of emphasizes on the so-called alpha attractors in the Kalash and so on. And there are basically uh, two field models. And the important point is, okay, it's, uh, so this is a field space rich curvature. Nothing to do with the curvature of space time. It's really the internal space. And okay, the data that I told you, if you have a Kalash potential, you can compute the geometry and then the curvature. And the important point, you see why it's important later on, is that the curvature is negative, and so the dimensionless thing is the Ricci times the Planck mass square, for dimension three, and uh, it's negative, and actually in the limit of what is called alpha attractions corresponds to small alpha. So in that case, the curvature is large in Planck units and negative. You, you see why I'm expressing this. Also, if you phrase inflation in effective field theory, in general, you expect operators of that type uh, coupling the inflaton phi and other scale of field sky with uh, a scale of new physics m greater than h. So what I'm just telling you is it's quite legitimate to consider the effect of this field space curvature with a mass scale m, something like that. So that's the uh, field space Ricci or Riemann. This is the order of magnitude of the curvature is the new mass scale, 1 over this mass scale squared. And in general, it is anything between h and the Planck mass. And I will show you this at consequence. So, Studying uh, cosmological perturbations in this kind of setup has been known for a long time, for more than 20 years. So the equations have been known, and simply, well, the impact of, of, uh, of this curvature has not been really, really, really realized. Um, let me skip the details. Of course, if you linearize everything in physics, they're just harmonic oscillators, so inflation is a bunch of harmonic oscillators. The QI are the different field fluctuations, if you want. And this is just if you want, x double dots uh, plus a mass there, and then there is, of course, the friction from up. So all the physics is in the mass matrix. And the mass matrix usually has three components. There is the usual one which you would expect from the mass, which is second derivative of the potential. That's usually the, the only one people talk about. Here is just a comma here is because it's covariant with respect to the field space metric, but okay, this is one. This is some well understood geodesic uh, kinematical effects, but the one I will stress is this one. It's something which is proportional to the Riemann curvature tensor of the field space metric. So indeed, it arrives when the field space is curved. And you see, if you, it's very simple actually, I mean, there should be this thing. If you forget about, it's basically the geodesic deviation equation that I told you. If you forget about the coupling with gravity, so no a, forget about the potential and so on. You just have a curved field space, you look at the trajectory, your background trajectory, and you look at fluctuations around it, and the fluctuations will be sensitive to the curvature. And if the curvature is negative, sectional curvature is negative, there will be an instability. So just to be more concrete, if I concentrate on two things for simplicity, but of course everything else. Um, and you're familiar with this kind of picture, if you have two fields and you have a background trajectory during inflation, it's convenient to look at the perturbations uh, along and orthogonal to the background trajectory. And of course, the orthogonal ones, which are called the entropic fluctuations, the details are not important. They, they are, well, they tell you the stability of the trajectory. They are embedded in root if you get So that's very well known. And, well, these entropic fluctuations, they obey a very simple equation. Again, harmonic oscillator with a time dependent effective mass and friction. And it again has three contributions, which are basically the projections of the three ones I've talked There is a usual one, the Hessian contribution, so second derivative of the potential along that direction. There is this thing coming from kinematic effects that is not important, and there is this one. So here I am I'm using m squared divided by h squared. This is the dimensionless thing which is important during inflation. What is called a light scalar field is this much less than one, a heavy scalar field is this much greater than one. And you see this term is, uh, so the, simplici the, the, the simplification of going from n fields to two fields is that the, the, the information of the curvature is only in the Ricci scalar. So there is just one number you want, the, the, the field space uh, Ricci scalar. Times the Planck mass squared, again that's dimension less, times epsilon. Epsilon is the slow roll parameter during inflation 
minus h dot divided by h squared. So lately, I mean, I mean I've written the, I, 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 this question I've been for a long time. I, I've written it in my first paper, and usually it is this garden, uh, and I've been the same for years. Uh, the main reason being that well, there is epsilon in front of it, and so lately you think, well, how can there be a, an effect? Also, usually people put the pump plus one, so I will show you it's easy to realize here the magnitude of this. But the idea is simple. This contribution can be large and negative and be this one. That is, you put up the model with uh, with a potential which is stabilizing your trajectory, the heavy mass, and and this one is negative, be this one and destabilize the trajectory. So at least in this two field model, uh, if the Ricci scalar is positive, I have nothing to say because uh, okay, this thing will even more stabilize the field you want to stabilize. So I am straight on the um, hyperbolic space field, negative field space curvature. And so if, if, if this is, let's say, 10 or 100, how can this one be this one? Either the, the curvature is important or epsilon. And something I want to, to, to emphasize is this naive suppression by epsilon is, is only, well, the end of inflation is epsilon is 1. So epsilon like, grows during inflation. And at least by the end of inflation, there is no epsilon suppression. I will keep that. And most importantly, as I've told you, the, the, the field space curvature is one over some mass scale m, which, which in general is much, uh, well, which can be easily much smaller than the compass. For example, uh, there's no fine tuning at all that m can be of order of the string scale or the Kaluza plan scale in, in high energy physics. So 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the minus 3 the compass. In that case, you will see that this thing which multiplies epsilon is 10 to the 4 or 10 to the 6. So in that case, although, let's, let's say you consider a very heavy field, which is usually, usually people are happy when they stabilize fields when the mass squared is of order h squared, even if I took here, let's say, 100, well, you have one, remember you have 100 here, and here now if you have 10 to the, a negative 10 to the 4, 10 to the 6, although if it's multiplied by epsilon, this does have an effect. So in practice, it means that way before the inflation, when epsilon was very, very small, this term was, was, was winning, and, uh, and, and the field was stabilized, and then epsilon grows and grows and grows, up to the point that it reaches a critical value so that the effective mass vanishes, and then uh, the field becomes tachyonic, and the effective mass is even more negative. So you see the link with hybrid inflation that has been, uh, uh, it was important for the rest of the, uh, the previous talk, Let's forget about the details. Hybrid inflation is, you have, it was invented uh, about 20 years ago. It's a way to end inflation. Basically, you have inflation or writing with uh, field phi, and you put by hand a, a tachyonic instability to end inflation. And basically, here it's similar, but I haven't put anything by hand. It's just the rolling of the inflaton in a curved field space which, generate, which generates this instability. Okay. The potential is still the steep wall. But that the effective mass felt by the field due to the curvature basically behaving this way. So people have been arguing about hybrid inflation for 20 years, about how to calculate this thing because it's complicated. There might be primordial black holes, as we've heard, which is complicated to, to, to calculate. Uh, you need to go usually beyond linear contribution theory to use stochastic effects. And this is the same type of calculation and model dependence will appear here with the additional sub with additional complications of the, of the kinetic effects, of the derivative complex. So the ability to tell you that I'm, I'm not able right now to say what would be the impact of this instability. But the most conservative approach is that, so all the, all the modes will become unstable, the, the energy density in the small scale will grow, and that will probably end inflation. That's what happens in hybrid inflation, that was the original claim of Lean. Of course, depending on parameters, we know it can be more complicated, there, the instability can be mild, there can be a second phase of inflection, and so on. But the thing I want to explain here, even in the simplest conservative approach, this does have consequences. Because, again, it was in a model in which uh, inflation was supposed to arrive much, much later. Now, in a, if, in a model, if inflation ends when epsilon reaches its critical value, which is 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the minus 4, this change lots of things. And this is basically the, the plot I've shown you before. You consider a model, you make predictions, 
chart here, and actually inflation ends at this point in the of this. So that changes, that changes. Okay, I hope you understood the main idea. I just want to show you a concrete like, example to show how it works. That's just the simplest, okay, that's just the, the, the minimal realization really of the idea. Consider a scalar field phi, which is supposed to be your inflaton, with a potential that you like, Lars, Tarobinsky, or whatever, V of phi. And let me add this, uh, okay, just one scalar field for simplicity chi, and you hope to stabilize it, to stabilize it by giving it a large mass n, much greater than h. Of course, if I'm doing only that, nothing happens. For all the reasons I've told you, which is that generic, generically there is a non trivial fixed space metric, let me add these uh, higher order operators here, so you see, uh, in front of the kinetic M of phi. It's a dimension 6 operator with a scale of new physics M greater than H. Um, in general, it's completely, uh, well, it's expected from an effective view point of view. It, so unless you, there is a symmetry reason that I'm telling you that it should not be there, in general it is there. Um, you may wonder why I put linear tens in chi. Um, well, if, if chi is zero, is indeed your background that should be no linear tens in chi, or you can be more to symmetry. Of course, there will be a bunch of higher order terms, uh, higher orders in chi, either in the potential or here. But I'm looking at, a, if you want at a valet, around chi equals zero, and I'm just looking at the first terms so this, this is very simple, but this corresponds to lots of models in the literature by well-known people, uh, and factors of that type, other models who want to embed, I mean, to make basically historically efficient in supergravity. They always end up with this type of thing because by definition, they start with two fields, I mean, with, let's say, usually one complex scalar field in supergravity. So in, in the end, they have two fields. They want to realize the effect of slow inflation, so by any way, they try to stabilize one of them, and there is a non-trivial field space metric. And in, in, so I'm not saying against these papers, just to show you the, 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 how, how it is dealt in general, which is the, the complication coming from that is completely overlooked. Because people usually say, well, uh, chi is stabilized by a large mass, so let's put chi equals zero, consistently with the equation of motion. And that's fine, but that's an unstable point. So that's that's if you compute the field space, uh, the curvature of you know, the field space corresponding to that, it's, as I told you, one over the new mass scale of the problem, which is f, and it is negative. Or equivalently, if you look at the effective mass, it's just the formula I've shown you, there is, a, if you want the bare mass, one from the potential, but there is this contribution which is minus epsilon times this uh, hierarchy which can be done. So, again, when epsilon is very, is very small, okay, this one is winning, and the, and the the fields uh, seen a, such type of potential, effective mass at the moment, and epsilon growth until you reach a critical value, and then and then you have the sensibility. To show you the concrete effects, let me play with the simplest thing, which is uh, the Stavovitsky inflation, okay? the one which is in the sweet spot of the, of the data, of the plot constraints, which are there. That's NS, scalar spectral index, and that's the tensor to scalar ratio. And this one, here is a single field prediction. And now let me just, uh, basically I'm using exactly the same setup as before, I'm adding this, I'm, I hope to stabilize another scalar field by giving it a large mass, which I took to be 100 h squared, so very large. And I'm playing with a, with a scale n. Uh, quite reasonable values like minus one, minus two, or 10 to minus three, the plot mass. So these are energy scales which are much above the h. And Okay, let me, look, let me just concentrate on the blue curve, which is simplest conservative approach. Inflation ends abruptly. In that case, it's straightforward to derive predictions. You just modify what is your observational window and your potential, you can NS and R. And, well, if the inflation ends earlier, like for 10 to the minus 3, the pump mass, uh, well, NS is closer to 1, R is smaller, up to the point that the model is completely excluded. The other critical uncertainty, then, if there is a second phase of inflation, it might be better. So just to show you that it changed enormously, if you take a given model, uh, for example here, it will be worse. If you take a model which, uh, which would be here, with this mechanism, it, it, it might be back in like the game. Um, maybe one important thing, I would just, I would just tell you the, the idea. This, this is very important, this gives a model independent constraints on the curvature of high energy physics models. You can show that 
m divided by h, the dimensionless quantity, has to be greater than, let's say, 500h. That's a very powerful statement. So we know why inflation is useful for energy physics. It's because inflation is sensitive to the Planck scale. So this negativity of the coupling doesn't work. So if n is close to the Planck mass, it will never beat if you want the, the it will never overcome the potential barrier and it's effectively single field. I've concentrated on this regime in which inflation ends prematurely and this has social consequences. What I'm telling you is that if n is less than let's say 500 h depending on precise value, the model is excluded. Um, the reason is basically you can't fit the CMB data. You can't generate the universe with 10 to the minus 5 temperature fluctuations. You can't normalize it to the CMB. If you do the calculation the other way, you would find that it generates a universe with more structure than the noise. But, but, so that's very powerful because usually inflation is supposed to probe physics at the energy H, the scale of inflation, and to probe um, high energies. Usually you say, well, we have to go to non gaussianity which probes high interaction and so on. And here, just the fact that inflation arises, and you want just to have 10 to the minus 5 temperature fluctuation in the CMB, give you this very strong select, um, selection criterion. And that's very model independent. It's not only this toy model that I'm showing you. Any two field model with even bending trajectory, complicated dynamics, or even n field models. OK, uh, I'll skip that. But basically, you, uh, in a Bayesian framework, you can say, OK, now I'm playing with with any shape of the potential I want and study uh, how, how the, model, how the Bayesian um, evidences are changed, if you take this into account. And um, you see, for example, so green is standard and blue is this idea that I'm adding this effect of prematurely ending inflation motivated by this idea. And as you see, Starobinsky, which is, so it's inflation, not Starobinsky inflation, which is supposed to be the best model now, is, is worse. On the contrary, uh, all models from the 90s, like inflection point models, uh, MSSM, which generate N, which supposedly generate NS, which is 0 0.9, so are fairly excluded, given the mechanism I've shown you on the LSR plane, they are moved on the right, and, and basically they are, they are actually perfectly timed models. So this, this reshuffled the way you interpret the data, even the current data, in terms, in terms of quantum physics. Uh, if you're interested, I can show you more details. But, okay, maybe just to conclude, uh, again, it was two field, but really, in general, I mean, in n field model, there is n minus one stress of instability. If the sectional curvature in each of the directions is negative, there is this potential of instability. Um, okay, the bottom line is one way of seeing that is stabilization by large mass is not sufficient. And if you look at reviews about inflation in high energy physics, people usually only care about the Hessian. They calculate the second derivative of the potential, look at it, and if they look at the eigenvalues. The eigenvalue, which is the smallest, is the inflaton. And if all the other eigenvalues are positive, they say, well, in my inflationary landscape, the field, my fields are stabilized, and so on. And, well, that's not sufficient, because I've shown you the effect of the curvature, although naively surprised by epsilon, although not um, overlooked so far, is, is crucial. And for me, one way to see why it's important is to really the similarity with the eta problem. The eta problem is the fact that you can't just play with the potential that you designed by hand during inflation, like it was done in the early years of inflation. Because the higher uh, plant suppressed corrections to an otherwise flat enough potential, they generically modify the, 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 the mass of the, of the inflaton by other one in the, in the Hubble unit, and they can support inflation. And here it's the same. But for the orthogonal directions, for the orthogonal directions, you would like them to be heavy, and plant suppressed or string suppressed corrections will modify the effective mass by other one up to the point of, of, of ruining the curvature and destabilizing the trajectory. So last slide, um, you think it's very important because, well, it, as I told you, it modifies the social predictions. Uh, it gives a new mechanism to end inflation, which is not trivial because historically it used to be a difficult problem to end inflation. There are only two ways, which is servo violation, but that should become too steep. Or basically hybrid inflation, which is you put a tachyonic instability by hand. And here, it's basically similar to this idea, but you haven't put anything by hand. And so it's again the rolling of the inflaton in a curved field space, which dynamically generates an instability. So that's, as 
think there are lots of things to, to, to do, especially with this idea of, of primordial black holes, because there are many reasons that we, as we seem to, to, to discuss that. And um, I think this reinforces even, even more this because hybrid inflation is very nice, but it's just a model. And this shows that the same phenology might arise in a much more, in a much more universal way. And there are lots of things to do. Just because I've shown you hybrid inflation is complicated here, it's, it, it, it's, it's even more. And last thing, uh, I think we think it can change the qualitative picture we can have about inflation. Just to tell you, people who want to have a qualitative picture of inflation, they usually do random potential to study inflation in the landscape. And usually it's with trivial fee space metric for simplicity. And that just show you that it is, well, this whole story show you that it is misleading. For example, people do random potential and calculate the number of critical vacua, of, of true, I mean, they look at the hash of the potential, and, and well, that's our, our whole setup shows that uh, this does not capture the, the whole physics, that the curvature and the geometry of the physics space is important. So, let's talk to you. Thank you.